A month or a little more ago, I made a coffee table out of a Lego gear, and I had made three legs for it out of one of the pieces of maple I had slabbed up a few years ago. In cutting up that piece, I ended up with a leftover piece, and I began to work on a fourth leg for the Lego table. Three legs I thought would work, sort of like a three-legged stool, so it wouldn't wobble but it is a little tippy with just the three legs. But as I was cutting up that extra piece for the fourth leg, there was a nice spot where a branch used to grow out of the tree. And I thought that would be a nice piece to wood turn into a bowl. So I stopped working on the legs and I started working on this protruding knot in a piece of wood. I cut the piece at an angle so the knot would be normal to the back of the piece of wood so I could cut out the knot on the bandsaw. I attached the chuck for the lathe to the flat side of the knot and I put that on the lathe and I thought this was going to be a really quick project. I would just turn it in just an hour or two and I'd be done. And I do a quick little video. It might even just be a short. As I got into turning this, I made the tenon on the bottom to hold the chuck so I could turn the piece around and do the inside of the bowl. I was beginning to hit the knot. And at this point, I wasn't too worried about it. I was just making my tenon as I've done odd shaped pieces of wood before and it always seems to work out. But as I cut deeper and deeper into the bowl, I was getting more and more into the knot. I got to a tenon that would work with the chuck. And I took the piece off and I turned it around and put it in the chuck. But I couldn't get it to hold on to the tenon as well as I really wanted it to. So I needed to work on the tenon a little more. So I turned the bowl back around and I thought I would cut the tenon a little further into the body of the bowl and maybe I could get more material to hold on to. It turned out the inside of the knot was just completely missing. It was a big void. <laughs> so I tried to do a mortise, so sort of the reverse, a negative in the back of the bowl to hold the chuck. Even that, there just wasn't going to be enough material. So I decided to just cut off the entire bottom of the bowl and I would make a ring that would fill in that volume. So I had some more of the same tree and I cut a rectangular piece so I could start making segments for a ring. And I jointed and planed that piece and I cut it to the width that I needed wanted to make a ring that was going to not have a hole in the center. So it would be solid all the way across. And I just did 12 segments, so I can just use a 30-90 triangle for my wedgie sled. Then I can just cut the segments. That went pretty quick. And I cut a strip of walnut to go in between the segments. I thought it would be nice to really separate the segments. If I just did a ring and didn't separate them by color, I'm not sure it would really be that noticeable. So I thought it'd be nice to try and put a thin piece of walnut between each of the segments. And I can use my new printer's table saw to cut those. This worked great for this. Because I wanted to have the center of the ring solid, I glued the strips of walnut onto the segments first before I glued the ring together. As I needed material right at the center, if I glued everything together at once, the walnut strips wouldn't come to the center because they didn't have a point. So once the pieces were glued together, I could sand a point onto the walnut. And then everything went into the center and I could glue the ring together. Now the ring is dry, and I can see how it works on the bowl. So 
So I need to sand the face that's going to be glued to the bowl so it's nice and flat. And I need to sand the bottom of the bowl so it's also nice and flat. Then those two pieces can be glued together. And this is pretty straightforward. Now that it's attached, I can turn a new bottom for the bowl. And I have lots of nice material to work with. I made a tenon for the chuck. I wanted to fill in the missing angled piece on the top of the bowl. And I wanted to make it segmented instead of just gluing a big piece of wood on there. <laughs> I thought it would be interesting to make a piece that looked segmented like a ring, but it was just made out of a straight piece. So I used one of the extra pieces of the same maple tree and I cut it into sections and I added thin pieces of walnut between the sections and I glued that up into a piece that I could glue into that angled section on the bowl. So it would make something a little different on the rim. So I had to sand that surface flat and I could add the piece that I made to that angle. I cut it down to size on the bandsaw first, just so I wouldn't have all of that extra material sticking out on the lathe. <laughs> and I have to sand the face of the segmented piece that's going to attach to the bowl as well. And I sanded off my fins. That was really quick. So in gluing this segmented piece to the rim of the bowl, I had to do some interesting clamping. <laughs> I used some pin clamps at the ends. I put the tenon of the bowl in a clamp and then that gave me something to clamp against to hold the segmented piece in place. It was sliding off and down the angle, so I had to put a clamp across the rim of the bowl to keep that from sliding away from the center. Then I could clamp sort of downward on the glue joint. It worked in the end, it just took a lot of figuring out. <laughs> Now I can finally get to the sort of real turning. Put the chuck on. I can put the bowl in the chuck. The first thing to do is to make this round. I can turn off the segmented parts. They're sticking out. And I can get the, the face or the sort of top of the bowl flat. Then I can start taking out the center or the middle part the inside of the bowl. I use the tail stock at this point. Going through the center knot was kind of lumpy and very hard wood. So I had to be somewhat aggressive with the tool. So it helps to have the tail stock there to kind of hold everything in place. Then I can drill out the center. This kind of helps because the hardest part to turn is the very center as it's not moving very much. So if you can drill that out, then Turning the rest of it is pretty easy. Also, that hole can give you sort of a depth gauge as to how deep to turn. And it was just a matter of sort of finishing up the inside. I wanted to get down to the segmented part and kind of mesh or sort of smooth that out with the monolithic part of the bowl. And once I got the shape about right, I could use the scraper on the inside. Then I could sand. Sanding actually went really well on this piece. The maple is not too hard and the bowl is not very big. And it's a pretty open shape, so it wasn't really hard to get to every surface. And I got up to 1500 on the grit. Gives it a nice sort of polished look. Then I can turn the bowl around and do the bottom, or sort of the foot. And if I've left myself enough material, which I did with this nice ring that I made, this part of the process goes pretty fast. As at this point, I have the shape in my mind well enough that I can make that shape. Once the shape is there, I can sand. And that also goes pretty fast because it isn't a very big area. 
takes longer to change the sandpaper grit than it does really to do the sanding. <laughs> it's done. At least the shape is done. I can put finish on, just tongue oil. Went on pretty nice. And it turned out really nice. I really like the organic look of the monolithic part with the regular geometric part of the, the segmented sections. It wasn't really a burl. It was where a knot had come out of the tree. So it really doesn't have a whole lot of burl look to it, but it does have a little bit. Thanks for watching.